There is a sinister and secretive group of people that run the globe. They control everything from banks to the media. They own the world. They own 99% of the world's wealth, and yet there are less than 1% of the population. They have special family bloodlines to pass on power from generation to generation. They have sacred rites and secret rituals. They have a belief system that stretches back in time for thousands of years to their very origin. Arte in regnum fasmatis. They spawned the religions, royal families, global business, financial systems and arms companies. They created revolutions and wars on an epic scale. They watch everything we do and manipulate our thoughts and actions. You are in their service and you do not even realise it. They have been doing all of this and more for thousands of years and they have one goal in sight. This is the darkest, untold tale of control in the history of mankind. This is the story of what they believe, what they do, how they do it, and why. They have many names, but they have one origin and one purpose. And now, we have tracked down their symbols, secrets, names, origin and purpose. Using previously unknown and secret sources, we will reveal them. This is the Illuminati. For centuries there have existed certain esoteric schools of mystical philosophy. They originated in the Orient, moved through the Levant, Egypt and the Near East until they finally arrived on the shores of Europe and from there to the rest of the world. Hidden within these schools there are elements of Buddhism Zoroastrianism and Egyptian occultism mingled with Grecian mysteries, Jewish Kabbalism and fragments of Syrian cults. Some of these names may sound strange but they are the origin of our modern religions and belief systems. Out of this hodgepodge of oriental philosophy, magic and mythology arose the early Christian Gnostics, Islamic Mohammedism, Ishmaelites, Druzes and the infamous Assassins. The Gnostics were the mystical element of Judaism. They wrote the Gospels of Christianity and hid within the text the real meaning of the strange tales. The same is true of most mystical elements of the various religions. From all of this arose the political religious movements of the Middle Ages. We know them as the Illuminati. they 
had other names such as Albigenses, Cathars, Waldenses, Troubadours, Anabaptists and Lollards. And from here arose the secret societies. The Knights Templar initiated the Muslim assassins into the subversive mysteries and the occult forces of the alchemists, Rosicrucians and others permeated them all. This is the real history of what we generally term the Illuminati. Through this understanding, we shall be able to see them clearly wherever they arise. This is the information you need to see clearly. This is the hidden history of the Illuminati that you have never seen before. Taken from secret sources that we have tracked down and are now about to reveal. Prepare to witness the might of the world's most powerful secret society. We begin with a sacred secret that is at the very heart of the various societies, the Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is a mystical tool of Judaism. It is a sacred way of getting to God and involves rituals, symbols and things we would classify as magic. The Kabbalah is made up of two kinds, theoretical and practical. Practical Kabbalah is engaged with the construction of talismans and amulets. The theoretical is divided into literal and dogmatic. The dogmatic is the summary of the metaphysical doctrine taught by Kabbalists. It is the system of Jewish philosophy. It is the perception of the plan of the universe itself and the link which attaches all elements to a common principle. It represents the 32 paths on the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. The 10 Sephiroth, or Centres of Light, united together by the 22 paths to which the Hebrew letters are attributed. These are potent magical forces. The letters are divided into three mother letters, Shin for fire, Mem for water and Aleph for air. There are seven double letters for the planets, 12 single letters for the signs of the zodiac. This is how the esoteric magic is broken down. The power is not just within the knowledge, but with the words and letters themselves. The knowledge of how to utilize these is the power of the secret societies. Uniting all of these devices is the spirit or ether, what they call in Star Wars, the Force. It is all about the descent of the soul of man into matter and its ultimate return from matter back to the universal life force. This return is called illumination or enlightenment. Knowledge of this is thousands of years old and yet science is discovering that energy cannot die 
and hence our energy does in fact return back into the universal energy from where we came. The secret knowledge is that we never left. We just unite as a soul or force with matter itself and become conscious of our own existence. It is the ultimate knowledge that the God on earth, the universe itself, has become aware of itself. Imagine this knowledge in ancient times and how it would raise you up above others. The term we use, God, is not the only one they use. The secret term is known as the Tetramagraton, yod he vau he It is the creative principle, the thing that gave rise to all others. It is the father, mother, son and daughter. It is all. It represents all forces of nature. There is no division. In the beginning, it divided, male and female, and the ultimate truth is that reunion is the divine force. This is the reason that sexual rituals across the world from ancient times were seen as sacred. It was the work of the creative principle. The absolute Godhead is called the Whitehead, for within white are all the colours of the spectrum. He is the source of all light and wisdom. Knowledge of him makes one like him. He is known also as the Ancient of Days, for all that exists all that has been formed by the Ancient of Days can only exist through the union of the male and female. The spreading of this male and female, this father and mother, throughout the universe results in the Son, for within him is the Father and Mother. This is the origin of the Son on Earth, the Christ Child, for he is the Ancient of Days reunited. Today, secret societies see this Son as knowledge and science. Within him, all that can be known exists. Knowledge of him within one's own mind allows knowledge of all that is. This knowledge can be gained in several ways. Meditation, prayer, isolation and drugs are just a few examples. It is all about freeing the mind from the material, freeing the soul from matter. It is no different to the experiences we hear about from people who have taken mind-expanding drugs. It allows creativity to flow. It sparks the creative principle that is within each one of us. 
We came from the universe. We are the universe. And within us all, there exists the universe. We can therefore create whatever we want, as long as we have the knowledge to do so. In sacred symbolism, we see these principles laid out before us. Often, it is the all-seeing eye, the symbol of wisdom, and the one unified Godhead. Often, it is a human with three heads, the father, mother and son. They are divided and yet together. Kabbalists state that the mind is like this, and that it is united by means of 32 pairs of nerves, which mirror the 32 paths of wisdom. Wisdom, therefore, is the path to the white head. Through the work of the Caduceus, or Kundalini, wisdom can be attained. These are simply symbolic representations of the energy force rising up to the white head, the source of all light. According to the Kabbalah, every form of existence from matter to the eternal wisdom is the manifestation of this infinite power. It is not sufficient that all things should come from God in order to have reality and continuance. It is also necessary that God should always be present in them, that he should live, develop, and eternally reproduce to infinity under these forms. It is the ultimate fractal. The true secret of all this is that none of these secret societies therefore truly believes in one God. They are pantheistic, for there are many elements of the one God in existence, in order for there to be an existence. God truly is within all. The Kabbalah is not a medieval creation as some would have it. In fact, it goes back in time to ancient Chaldea and Persian and can be traced to the period of Jewish captivity in Babylon. The Jewish scholars there adopted and adapted much older philosophers and by doing so created a seed that would find its home in Europe centuries later. At the very same time, Zoroaster was teaching his doctrine of similar dualism, the light and dark, the fire and water, good and evil. The Jews took on these beliefs and 14 years later returned from captivity. In later times, the alchemists and astrologers of the Middle Ages used these beliefs in their own work on the transmuting of metals and conjurations. This was known as fluidic magic, before science came along and redefined everything. It was based firmly in the Kabbalah, which itself was based on older ancient cults. Today these beliefs are still profoundly at the heart of secret societies. One group of Jews that would influence the world and the secret societies 
were the Gnostics. They derived their leading doctrines and ideas from many sources, including Plato, Philo, the Zenda Vesta, the Kabbalah, and the sacred books of India and Egypt. It is these mystics of Judaism that introduced them into what became known as Christianity. They wrote the various texts that we would now call the New Testament, and many more besides. Within these texts they hid the mysteries. This is why today we can look back and see that the stories of Jesus and Mary mirror those of Horus and Isis in Egypt and many other places and stories. These Gnostics brought together, for the first time, the mysteries of the world and gave them a double meaning, a practical and a theosophical. The stories can be read on many levels because there are many levels. These are not the works of a few Jewish scribes living in Damascus, but rather the accumulation of thousands of men over thousands of years. There is deep, hidden truth about the mysteries of the universe to be found within those pages. The great meeting of ancient mystics occurred in that lost city of Alexandria. Here the Jewish Greek school under Aristobulus and Philo merged with Asia, Egypt, Greece and more. All the wonders of the universe as perceived by the minds of men came together in this one place and time. Aristobulus truthfully declared that all the facts and details of the Jewish scriptures were in fact allegories concealing the most profound meanings and that Plato was in fact simply borrowing from what had come before. Studying Plato is therefore to study the many that came before. The truth is this can be said of a great many so-called classical writings. From Egypt, Greece, Persia and elsewhere, the Platonists borrowed and the Gnostics received and spread. For the ordinary man on the street, as it is to this day, all of this seems fanciful and beyond them. It was secret and sacred, and for the scholars alone. And yet, even today, our modern secret societies still hold to the belief that everything that exists emanates from a source of infinite light. They claim direct descent from the Jews of Alexandria, and by them, back in time over millennia to the masters of the mysteries. They are known by a name that would change into Illuminati. They were known as the Brotherhood of Light. They preserved the learning throughout the Dark Ages, so-called because of the loss of the light of learning. The highest development was in the Egyptian and Kabbalistic systems, and this was blended with Christian thought through the Gnostics and Neoplatonists. Its studies kept alive during the Dark Ages among the secret Jewish cabals, and it is still alive and hidden to this day among the modern Brothers of Light.
the Illuminati. In Egypt and Judea, long before the commencement of Christianity, these notions were spread. They formed Christianity through the many Gnostic groups known as the Essene, Therapeutes, Sadducees, Carpocratians, Basilidians and Manichaeans. They all adopted the teachings and spread them into Asia, Africa and Europe. They preserved the mysteries of the Temple of Solomon as a device for teaching about the truths of human existence and the Grand Architect. These teachings are fully found within the secrets of the later Freemasons. The reason is simple. It is a long, single thread of secret societies that formed from the earliest of times. Knowledge passed on from one generation to the next, hidden in allegory and symbolism, and being rediscovered today through science. Early Gnostics and Manichaeans were known as primitive masonry and their teachings preserved among the Druzes who came into contact with the Crusaders in later years and influenced them. This is the line of creation for the modern Freemasons, directly back to the Gnostics and from there back to Egypt, Persia and the ancient cults. It can all seem confusing. Trinities, dualism, one god, pantheism. But in truth, they all relate. We can see this through the teachings of the Manichaeans. They taught pantheism and dualism. Many gods of the one, and the division of that one god to ultimately reunite. The creative principle must have dark and light, male and female, in order to create. But the ultimate union brings about the creation of what was there in the beginning, the one God, the sun, the light. It is the symbol of the serpent eating its own tail, the coming full circle. One simple symbol depicting the ultimate truth. What we begin to see with the Manichaeans is a glimmer of so-called modern philosophy of communism. Something that is part and parcel of true masonry. For the good of all. Nature, they said, reveals the two great principles community and unity of all things. Human laws were contrary to the natural laws and were therefore guilty violations of the divine order of things. It was therefore necessary to institute community of lands and goods. Manes, the founder of the cult, disavowed war and human civil establishments as being created by the dark side. Fire. Possessions were condemned. For his beliefs, Manis paid the ultimate price of crucifixion, his message too radical for a greedy humanity. In later years, these beliefs found a home in the Ishmaelis, named after their founder, Ishmaeli. He knew that mankind could not be changed by violent revolts and open war. Therefore, he formed a carefully considered scheme to secretly undermine what could not be openly attacked. Over the years, his League of 
hidden rebels, eventually succeeded in placing a man upon the throne. The long-term plans of these secret organisations must not be avoided. They do in fact plan decades and sometimes centuries ahead. Indeed, the degrees of initiation within the Freemasons of the Grand Lodge of Wisdom in Cairo were given by the Ishmaelis. They were called the most ancient and precious degrees of the Eastern secret societies and spread into the West from Cairo. The founder of the Ismailis was called the founder of the path and a God-made man. It all revolved around a method of controlling the mind. By reducing a man down and rebuilding him, one would own him. And here is the crux of the matter and a reason for concern in modern times. Secret societies were rapidly becoming more than just a method of passing on true wisdom from generation to generation. It was now becoming a tool for control, for manipulation. Methods were being employed that turned men into sheep. <laughs> As each man passed through the levels of the nine degrees, he was stripped of his humanity. As soon as the proselyte arrived at the ninth degree, he was ripe to serve as a blind instrument to all the passions and above all limitless ambition for domination. The philosophy was reduced into a simple phrase, believe nothing and dare all. Religion was destroyed in the mind of the follower. All morals were eradicated. There was no other aim than to realise the projects of the masters, for whom it was said nothing was sacred. The secret instructions were simply to practise and gain great sleight of hand, so as to fascinate the eyes in order to work the miracles which are expected of you, to fool all. Today the numerous sects, Kabbalistic and Illuminati, much the same methods are used and the same doctrines taught. Nothing is sacred, everything is acceptable to achieve the Master's goal. Over thousands of years they were finally turning to the dark side. Through meditation and other forms, they believe they are achieving union again with the masters from who they receive universal teachings. Their role is to carry out the great work of worldwide unification, religious, political and intellectual. To make a one world government, a one world agenda. To reunite the creative principle and bring about a new creation, a new world order under the master. The question is, who is on the side of light and who is on the side of dark? We can see an element of the dark side originate in around 1090 AD, when Hassan Sabah founded the Assassins. He had fled the House of Wisdom in Cairo because of his intrigues. He created a fortress when he bought the castle of Alamut on the Caspian Sea. Over time, he would gain many more. His assassins would strike terror into the heart of many and he obtained great power. He assassinated caliphs and viziers. Upon his death, he was replaced and the head would always be known as the Old Man of the Mountain. It spread far and wide and gave the British Empire a lot of trouble in India under the guise of the Thuggees.
In the early years, they came into contact with, and often worked with, the Christian order of the Knights Templar, both understanding the mysteries in the same way. Indeed, these assassins were not true Muslims at all. The third degree in their initiation stated the denial of the truth of the Quran and all other sacred scriptures. They each learned of the many names of the brothers of the order, royal, sacerdotal and patrician, in all the parts of the world. They were to learn the allegorical meanings of the Quran and sacred scriptures. In fact, the amazing truth is this, that almost all the degrees of the assassins meet and match those of the 18th century degrees of the Illuminati. The reason, of course, is simple. They were one and the same. They were yet another name emerging from the darkness of a hidden order that had been influencing history for thousands of years. All things were allowed as long as it benefited the order. And this is still true to this day. In each of the many faces of the Illuminati, the sacred oaths are the same. The initiate first promises blind obedience. He then swears to communicate to none but his superiors any doubts he might have about the mysteries and doctrines. He swears to the hidden chiefs by all that he holds dear, never to betray the methods to mortal man. They were and are taught that the literal meanings of all scriptures is purely for the vulgar, the uninitiated. The scriptures were for the mystical deification of man, not for the worship of a separate god. This self-deification was known as the hidden god, the god within not yet known or realised hidden from the vulgar minded. This is the Christ within. The assassins and all other secret societies that are and were part of the greater Illuminati world all attempt to attain the illumination. Rhythmic dancing, wine, blood, orgies and drugs all used to achieve the desired result. The dark side of all this is simple. These methods became utilised to actually control those who believed they were being freed. They were being hypnotised in a similar way to the American secret operation MK Ultra did in the late 20th century. They are given a taste of paradise to come and promised eternity, and for this they swear allegiance to the Grand Master and will do whatever he bids. The assassins also had a hierarchy we can see in many other orders, a Grand Master, a Grand Prior, Masters, Companions, Guardians, Aspirants and Secret Brethren, mirrored almost perfectly by the Freemasons. The Grand Master, or Old Man of the Mountain, had seven invisible Imam who were used to overthrow governments in the same way the Illuminati did in revolutionary France. They mirrored the Knights Templar, even though they were supposedly on different sides of the religious fence. The fundamental rule of the two orders was to seize fortresses and castles in neighbouring countries in order to control the people and finances. In essence, they united in this operation and even fought side by side. They were, and still are, a secret state within a state, ruled by secret sects that are part of a universal world state ruled ultimately by the Illuminati masters. A supposedly separate sect at around the same time were the Druzes. They also originated in Egypt and were blamed for causing riots in Cairo. 
With this set, we see a prediction that would be repeated in other so-called separate orders, and which seems to run as a thread throughout time and across the world. They, like today's Islamic State, predict the end of the world as we know it, and a new one to come. This is a long-standing prediction, and one that strangely may yet come true. They held that the end of the world was at hand, and will be signalled by a mighty army from the East, under the guidance of a universal mind. The army will come from China, and Christians and Muslims will surrender and march towards Mecca, where the Divine will appear before them. They claim that all the brotherhoods of the world have a part in bringing this prediction to pass, or in other words, making it happen. All of these oriental beliefs are in fact the same. They all originate thousands of years ago in the Syrian and Persian secret sects who had come to an understanding or enlightenment regarding the existence of mankind. The light within and within which all knowledge was held. Whether they used drugs, dervish or meditation, the result was the same the realization of our place in the universe. These beliefs were taken over by the dark side, who started to use it for power and control, and to bring about the unification of a one world government, which they control. Time was immaterial. The plan would come to fruition eventually, and the final throes of this plan would entail a massive Third World War within which Islam and Christianity would somehow play a vital role. Time moved on, education brought with it materialism and secularism, and instead of turning to religion, man turned instead to rationality and science. In essence, the early scientists became scientists to understand the nature of God himself and our place in the universe, without the use of drugs, but through evidence. All along, the same people were holding up as the great scientists, were in fact highly spiritual members of the secret orders, including people such as Isaac Newton. Mysticism was still rife in the world to explain the mysteries of consciousness. One name of a branch of the Illuminati that reared its head was Rosicrucianism. This mystic order spread first among the Germans, who were and have always been mystically inclined as a people. Nobody is entirely sure where and with whom it originated. The Order of the Rose and Cross, or Rosicrucian Order, has in fact existed since the dawn of time, just not under any particular name, and is in fact just another face of the Grand Illuminati secret brotherhood. They called themselves the Invisibles, and they even created their own origin story to explain themselves. The story itself is a mystical allegory. The originator, they say, was Christian Rosencruz, who travelled to Damascus, the home of the Gnostic originators. He then travelled to meet the Magi, where he was called the Chosen One, who had been prophesied. He was initiated into the mysteries, taught magic, and sent back via Spain to Germany. All of his life, and even the story about his death, is an allegory. He never existed. His life is a teaching only to be understood by those with the knowledge. In the 17th century, 
at the same time that other secret orders were resurfacing following Catholic oppression. They released information into the world. This, along with many more things, started to bring about an enlightenment that would eventually see the powers of old royalty and religions fall. Their manifesto was simply to appear to be special and chosen, to attract others to a promised enlightenment, and to push them to revolt against the divided world of power-hungry royals. Thus, they would force revolution, and every revolution brings a desire for unity. On the face of it, Rosicrucianism shouted about the mysteries. It was composed of mystical illuminism, in combination with alchemy, astrology, magnetism, and communication with the divine word. The name, in fact, is a clue to the age-old duality expressed by those we have already discussed. Rose is in fact ros, meaning dew or water. Cross is a symbol for fire. It is an occult and hidden symbol of duality, fire and water. A Rosicrucian is therefore a philosophy who by means of dew seeks the light, by the mother finds the father, uniting them both, creating the Christ. The rest of the story of the tomb wherein is buried Christian Rosencruz is a retelling of the ancient mysteries such as the tale of Osiris from Egypt. Unlike the Egyptian Ankh cross, the rosy cross was a symbol of duality and therefore life creating. How marvellous and wonderful all of this must have seemed and yet it is another retelling of an ancient story. Why do this? Because this is how the secrets are passed on from generation to generation. A story of Osiris would be of no use in Germany, and so a new one is created or retold for a new age and a different culture. The basics remain the same, and understanding and meanings behind these stories helps us to highlight them whenever they reappear, as they did in the 1970s when Star Wars came out. Freemasonry, a long-standing occult-based secret society, has all these stories within it and more. Most members have absolutely no idea what any of it means and simply repeat the rituals because that's how they join and stay members. We cannot look at all members of the Freemasons and accuse them of running the world because they have no idea. However, because it has been a sponge of tradition and legend, it has been a useful tool to keep the golden thread of knowledge alive. It has also been a useful global tool for high-powered members of the real Illuminati to manipulate, as it did so in the French and American revolutions, even to the murder of presidents such as Abraham Lincoln. As mankind raced towards the Great Enlightenment and the glories of the brutal French Revolution, Several masters appeared to the world from their dark hideouts. They did so to ensure the plan they had formulated came to fruition. One such master went by the name of Pernity, and he founded or revealed the Illuminati of Avignon. He was born in 1716 and became a Benedictine monk, where he learned the mysteries from those hidden within the Catholic Church. Here, he learned all about the Hermetic Arts, and in 1766, he founded 
the Hermetic Rite, the Illuminati of Avignon. It grew and spread and he moved to Berlin. It is claimed he had a powerful angelic guide who gave instruction. As with most of these stories, we have to understand that this itself was symbolic to hide the truth from the ordinary person. He wrote books in occult numbers and codes that are difficult to decipher. Pernity, it was said, was to found a new people of God and he grew so influential that he built a temple. They kept absolute secrecy. They did their work, spread the mystical ideas and rebuffed the old ways. Their influence was at large. When Pernity died, his huge numbers of followers were simply swallowed up by another branch of the secret Illuminati, the Martinists. These Martinists were based in Paris, where their work was coming to a final conclusion with the French Revolution. They had allied themselves with that other infamous branch created by Adam Weishaupt, unknown to the world as the Illuminati. Generally, to the esoteric world of the occult, all these groups come under a name, the Illumins. Whether they claim to be Rosicrucian, Illuminati, Assassin or Freemason, the ultimate thread that spawns them all is ancient and based upon the very things we have been discovering. Illumination. The Illumins exercise extreme secrecy and influence society in multiple ways. As the Comte de Devereux pointed out just before the French Revolution, there is a conspiracy being plotted so well planned and so deep that it will be very difficult for religion and governments not to succumb to it. He was, of course, totally correct, and religion and government did succumb. In fact, the same thing has been going on for millennia. Evidence discovered by us for this documentary gives a list of names over the course of time that were in fact masters of the Order of Illumines. These include Jesus, the Grand Master of the Knight Templar Jacques de Molay, Paracelsus, the Jesuit-influenced occult author Cazotti, mystics Cagliostro, Alephus Levi and Saint Martin, Polish philosopher Ronsky and hundreds more. The ancient message with these names states this. Shouldst thou reveal the least of the secret arts or any part of the hidden mysteries that meditation may have led thee to understand, there is no physical torture that is not sweet compared to the punishment that thy folly shall bring upon thee. Their purpose is also revealed as the Masters are committed to work with all their strength to establish on Earth the association of all interests, the federation of all nations, the alliance of all cults and universal solidarity. In other words, their own personal goal is the Masters bidding to establish a one world government. This text is from 1913, not 1713, and comes from the same sources. It proves, beyond doubt, that the establishment of a one-world government has been an ongoing affair for a very long time. At the time, the plans for the First World War had been completed, and they knew this particular revolution would not end until the 1940s.
As the French Revolution was getting underway, the hidden order of the warrior monks, the Templars, was resurfacing. Their aim, of course, just like that of the Freemasons, was to re-establish the Temple of Solomon. This simply meant to establish the divine, perfect human, the chosen race. They were, like most of the others, Kabbalists and Gnostics, the very reasons the power of the Catholic Church needed them to go. They did disband in the 14th century, but they lived on under different names. They were governed by unknown illumines, and being revealed only to those who had passed through the highest number of degrees of initiation. As the French monarchy had done away with them in the 14th century, it was only fitting that they should see through the destruction of the monarchy in the 18th. One of those men on the list of masters, Cagliostro, was in fact a member, having been initiated in Frankfurt with the members of the Illuminati. By the power of just a spoken word, these masters of the Illuminati could animate thousands of men across Europe and the world. All men obedient to masters they would never see. All men in positions of authority, power, education, commerce and military. All sleepers awaiting a call to action. And the call came, and France fell under the dark sky of bloody revolution. Daniel Pieces! Better get fire! Give fire! And those who did not carry out their orders were under no illusions as to their fate. Death would come to he who even in the lightest thing infringes the order which he had received from the chief or refuses to execute them. For nothing is unimportant in the sublime order. You must consecrate yourself entirely to the order. The secret government, but not less powerful, must lead other governments towards this noble aim without, however, allowing itself to be perceived, except through the universal opinion and assent of society. There exists a considerable number of our brothers. We are spread throughout most distant lands, all led by an invisible force. If you desire only to be a perjurer and a false brother, do not pledge yourself among us you will be cursed and unhappy. Our vengeance will reach you everywhere. Strong words indeed, and these words came to the initiate years before he would be allowed to see any real secrets. By the height of Illuminati power, the French Revolution was an established fact. Secret societies under various guises, and yet all united, had brought about a massive change in the world, and would do so again and again. They had emerged from the darkness to plot and scheme, and had been seen. French observer de Luchette wrote, there are a certain number of people who have arrived at the highest degree of imposture. They have conceived the project of reigning over opinions and of conquering not kingdoms nor provinces, but the human mind. This project is gigantic and has something of madness in it, which causes neither alarm nor uneasiness. But when we descend to details, when we regard what passes before our eyes of the hidden principles, when we perceive a sudden revolution in favour of ignorance and incapacity, we must look for the cause of it. And if we find that a revealed and known system explains all the phenomena which succeed each other with terrifying rapidity, 
How can we not believe it? Observe that members of the mystical confederation are numerous in themselves. If several men mix together, half qualities, they temper and strengthen each other. Some watch while others act, and this formidable ensemble arrives at its goal. It was according to this that the sect of the Illuminati was formed. One cannot, it is true, either name its founders or prove the epochs of its existence, or mark the steps of its growth, for its essence is the secret. Its acts take place in darkness, its evasive grand priests are lost in the crowd. However, it has penetrated sufficient things to astonish and draw the attention of observers, friends of humanity, to the mysterious steps of the sect. The roles of this particular branch of the Illuminants were simple. They were an active spy ring, operating espionage, terrorism and infiltration. They spread rapidly and ran so deep they even infiltrated other groups that were part of the whole. Through their unique use of the confession, they sought out opposition and eradicated them. In league with the secret assassin groups, Templars and others, they saw through the biggest political upheaval in European history until the world wars were brought about. They then simply slipped away, back into the darkness. The truth is, of course, that the thousands of members utilised for the short period of its existence did not just disappear. They simply moved sideways, back into their other orders, such as the Freemasons. This, then, has been a unique journey through the early life of the Illuminata, or Illuminants. We have seen that their origin goes back many thousands of years, back through the latter-day Illuminata to Freemasonry, Templarism, Alchemy, Gnostics and beyond. The word that we use to describe this powerful group simply describes how they originated in the search for illumination. We saw how their origins were in the search for truth, for the answers to ultimate questions. In searching they discovered, they named, held dear, symbolised and allegorised, and in so doing they jealously hid the secrets. In this original sin, they began the journey to the dark side. They guarded their secrets, but soon they guarded their power, wealth, information, knowledge and existence. They plotted against those who disagreed. They took down governments, and it seemed easy. They had the power of secrecy, a power that is worth more than any fortune. And they still hold this power. They still plot and scheme. Governments are still overthrown. Heads of state still murdered by secret assassins. The job is not yet done. The end is not in sight. More has to happen for the one world government to take control. The world is still too disparate and men in power too greedy for the dollars created from the division and hatred. What is the next step in the history of the Illuminati? Watch this space.